Engineering a better burger. Humans have traditionally been omnivores, with a diet of both meat and vegetables. But lately, it seems, we've become a society of meat eaters. According to the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, global demand for meat has increased over 500% in the past 50 years. Two things explain this. The Earth's population is rising rapidly, and people with higher incomes tend to consume more meat. With the population expected to reach 9 billion people around 2050, and with developing countries getting richer, this trend won't stop anytime soon. If meat production r i s e n d the consequences could be devastating for the planet. 30% of Earth's entire land surface, a massive 70% of all land available for agricultural use, is used for raising livestock. And more land is required each year as farmers struggle to meet the rising demand, which comes at the cost of rainforests and other valuable land. Reports by FAO show that meat production. Is responsible for 70% of the Amazon deforestation in South America. Large factory farms are also big consumers of energy and cause a lot of pollution. It's clear that our hunger for meat and the way we produce it is not sustainable in the long run. Fortunately, food scientists have been anticipating this need for change. They are working on some interesting alternatives to current methods of meat production. A group of Dutch scientists are engineering meats that can be grown in laboratories. This involves using cells taken from cows to grow muscle that can be mixed with other things to make beef. They say that this process could reduce the amount of energy and land needed to raise cattle by about 40%. Other scientists from the United States and China are working to create meaty flavors from mushrooms, which could be used to flavor foods. They feel people can detect chemical flavors and that natural flavors are better for the body. For now, lab grown meat is not a threat to traditional farming. Although scientists say that their beef could be ready for testing and eating soon. Large scale manufacturing won't be possible for another 10 years. It's far too expensive to develop in large quantities. The Dutch team will spend over $200,000 making enough meat for one burger, and not everyone will be keen on the idea of eating lab grown meat. While the general public isn't quite ready to accept fake meat, the day will come when we may not have a choice. Is your diet destroying the environment? People become vegetarian for different reasons. Some adopt a vegetarian diet as the ethical alternative to eating meat because they believe killing animals is wrong. People who are concerned about their health see it as a good way to keep slim and lower their risk of various diseases. Lately, more people are replacing meat with vegetables. Because of the vital role this plays in protecting the environment. Researchers from the Union of Concerned Scientists in the U.S. released a report on the impact of consumer behavior on the environment. Their study showed that meat consumption is one of the main ways that humans can damage the environment, second only to the use of motor vehicles. But how will modifying our diets make a difference? We can compare the amount of resources needed to produce meat and crops. For example, we need almost 20,000 liters of water to produce a kilogram of beef, whereas only 150 liters of water is needed to produce a kilogram of wheat. Similarly, one hectare, or 10,000 square meters, of farmland that is used for raising livestock produces about 227 kilograms of beef. But the same amount of farmland can produce 13,600 kilograms of carrots, 18,000 kilograms of potatoes, 
or 22,700 kilograms of tomatoes, it's clear that we can make more efficient use of land and water if we produce crops instead of meat. Raising livestock also contributes to rising global temperatures. Animals such as cows, pigs, and sheep release methane, a greenhouse gas that causes global warming, when they pass wind, with one cow producing an estimated 500 liters of methane each day. A 2006 report by the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, says that livestock farming accounts for 37% of all methane production and warns that methane may have a more damaging effect on the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. There is growing support for vegetarianism. For example, schools across England and the U.S. hold meat-free Mondays to show students how easy it is to eat less meat. Some people go one step further and eat a vegan diet, which excludes all animal products, such as cheese, eggs, and milk. However, some nutritionists believe that a vegan diet may deprive us of vitamins and minerals that are essential to our health. One does not have to become vegan or fully vegetarian to help save the environment. Whether it's just being vegetarian for one day a week or just eating less meat, a small effort on our part can go a long way.